everyone this is Rita with Restyle Renewed and I thought I would just turn the camera on for a few minutes while I am uh, chalk painting this big huge French provincial piece uh, for some clients if you see that piece over there behind me that is the client's uh, dresser for their bedroom and this is part of the set there's I think four or five pieces I'm doing for them but I just thought it would be fun to turn the camera on because my grandkids like to watch me paint. So I'm turning the camera on for Owen and Daniel. You get to see Grandma paint this morning. Grandma is painting this huge, huge, long dresser. And um, so I just thought I would turn the camera on for a few minutes for them so they can see what I'm doing. Now these are some of my favorite, whoops, can you see that? Some of my favorite rollers, uh, they're foam. So I'm, because this is a long piece, I am going to roll it. Uh, when, you have, when you have big surfaces, if you can roll it, it's way faster to roll. And also that way you don't see all the brush marks that tend to happen. Now this is a custom color I mixed up uh, just for my clients for this bedroom set. I think I posted on Facebook uh, the nightstand. That's the color I'm doing. This is a, she wanted a blue-gray, more on the side of blue. So I mixed up some paint and I'm very happy that my clients trust me with my colors. Um, so that's what this is. It's kind of like a, I don't know if you can really see, it's like a dark blue gray, kind of like a navy. And I'm wearing my painting clothes, so I just white paint on my clothes. That's the way I roll. All right, so let me get this poured and let me find my little brush I'm going to use today. Very picky about the brushes. I use. I guess I should not have wiped that off yet. All right. Just get this poured in my little container here. Get the dust out. Very professional way of removing the dust. All right. Don't need these right now. Now these rollers, um, you know, you can reuse these. Just wash them out, and I use them two or three times, and then I toss them. So they're really good um, for reusing. And if we're if you're working on a project, um, you're going to do two coats in one day. Just wrap it in saran wrap and stick it in the fridge, and then bring it out when you're ready to do your next coat and it will still be good to use. Now, where is my water? Get every last bit of paint that I can because this paint is very expensive, very expensive paint. So I try to use every drop I can. Sorry, I'm still drinking my coffee. Now where's my huge brush? So when you're using uh, chalk paint, it's good to use uh, natural bristle brushes. Actually, I need to wipe this first. It's got lint on it, so I'm just going to do a quick wipe before I paint. I try to get off all the lint. And these tap cloths are really good for getting off lint. Now, I wonder why there's white paint on here. don't know why that is. Let's just scratch that off. I have no idea how this happens, but
but I've got so many projects right now in the studio. I must have somehow splattered paint on here, but no worries because this is just, this is the undercoat for the chalk paint. This is actually, okay, I'm going to tell you guys a big secret. Whoever's watching, my secret is if you don't want something distressed and these clients don't want the furniture to have a distressed look, they want a modern, a more modern look. I put on a coat of oil paint on first. That's my secret. Because the oil paint protects the chalk paint from um, distressing the piece. When you use chalk paint, you're gonna have to, you have to do a lot of sanding to get the chalk paint smooth, to get rid of all the brush marks and stuff. So when I go in distress, when I go in sand to get this smooth, it won't sand down to the wood. It's just going to sand down to the dark oil paint. This is black. And so the wood won't show. She doesn't want any wood showing. So that's the secret. Is you use oil paint. My goodness, how on earth did I? I've got paint splatter like everywhere. grief. I don't know what I was doing. Okay, let's put that away. So now it's clean and I'm just going to um, do a quick coat of water. had some very exciting happenings yesterday morning Owen and Daniel we had the police coming to our door actually we had a troubled young man come to our door saying that he was being chased by um, people with guns so thank goodness grandpa was home and Grandpa came to the door because I answered the door and was scared to death. Thank goodness he didn't try to break in. Uh, so we called 911 and they came out and talked to this young guy. We don't know if he was maybe um, on drugs or if he was, or if it was a true story. But he was just, he looked really scared and confused and he kept telling us that um, people were chasing him with guns and then he told us that he had been hiding in our basement the entire night in the crawl space. So I was terrified. So lesson learned, you should always lock your outside doors. Anyways, the police came and hauled him off. That was an exciting morning. Now there's a brown line here. I don't know what that is, but So you're just going to use a roller on big long spaces um, to try to eliminate all the brush marks. And it's going to go on thin, your first coat, which is totally okay. two pieces I have finished for them. I think I only did two coats. 
underneath the, well first is the oil paint coat. And then I did two coats of this chalk paint. And two coats was enough. When you work with darker colors, two coats is typically enough. Um, it's the white, the white and the, you know, the white colors that you have to do. Sometimes four coats of pure white. The white colors are very tricky. Lint just somehow drops in out of nowhere. So this is the first coat. Um, and there's something down here. So get it off when you see it. And if you see any brush hairs, uh, hairs, hairs from your brush, you want to make sure you get them off when you see them because if not, it's going to leave a mark on your, on your piece that you're working on. So flick off the brush hair uh, as soon as you see it. So these foam rollers are nice because they leave a pretty smooth uh, finish. And then you just go over it with a roll, trying to stay even if you can. I can see a hair right there. So let's get that off before I do my... So the reason why um, the reason why I use water is because it gives me more open time. Because the chalk paint dries extremely fast, so when you incorporate water, it gives you a bit more open time to work with the paint. So there it is. Ooh, this looks bad. And I'm just going to quickly, quickly do the sides, but I will, I will actually come back though with a brush and do this with a brush. As you can see, this isn't going in. I don't know if you can see, it's not going in to the um, crack there. So you have to do, you have to do a brush so that you can get in there. if you can see the side. Now when I do the sides, I first go in and paint with my little brush um, before I do the roller. Let's see, if I move this, this might fall. Maybe I'll bring this down. Uh, let's see if you can 
see. Okay. So I'm going to get my little brush here and I'm just going to start doing all the brush parts first and then I will come in um, with my roller. Looks like I missed doing this area with the oil paint. You have to get in those cracks here. You want to get all that taken care of before you before you do the rolling. Because then you're gonna kind of ruin your ruin your rolling um, if you do this after you roll. I forgot my water. Let me go get the water. way over there, of course. So, we're getting our grandkids in a few days, and we are very excited. We haven't seen them in like a month, I think. So, Owen and Daniel, we are very excited about you coming and staying with us for a few days. Now if you can, um, it's kind of nice to do one last, one last sweep with your brush if you can. See how that just smooths everything out. Now when you're in areas like this, it is tricky to get. Because if you just leave it like this and I start rolling, uh, that's going to leave a mark. You'll see that line. So you kind of have to almost go back and bring down your paint so that you don't see that line that goes across. And um, same with down here. You can bring it up. It helps to eliminate that, the uh, painting that I did that way. Let me just check this little area here. Sometimes I forget about this little, you know, inside the legs. Oh, I did that one already. Now the thing about these rollers is um, they're really good for not leaving bad marks, but they do soak up a lot of paint. So you're gonna lose, you're gonna lose paint when you use these rollers. It's kind of sits in the foam in there. But it's, you know, it's, it's worth it. It's, uh, cause it's just much faster and, um, it's just the, the look, the look it leaves is a cleaner look. And 
you can do this on cabinet doors, the middle parts of your doors. If you wanted to, um, you know, you could do the roller in the middle and the brush marks on the side. Now this is probably getting um, Kim, did you mention color? The color is actually a custom mix of, um, for some clients, she wanted it blue-gray, so it is actually Napoleonic Blue Annie Sloan mixed with graphite. And um, I can't give you a formula because I never do that, I just pour. So um, I can't tell you how much of each, but it is more Napoleonic than gray because she wanted it she wanted it more blue than gray so hopefully that helps but that's just so nice about these chalk paints they are so easy to mix and get new colors that's another reason why I like them so much underneath enough and I'll come back and do the I'll come back and do the sides um, once this dries a little bit if you guys have any questions about um, painting just let me know the paint I use the most is Annie Sloan chalk paint it is a very expensive paint but it's a high quality, and I've been using using this ever since I started painting. So, um, you know, I know it very well, and I know the waxes very well, and her wax. That's another reason why I like to use um, her paint is because the wax is an incredible, her wax is an incredible sealer, and... Um, as a person in this business, sealers is what gives us problems. Finding good sealers, that, that can be the issue. So um, I stick with her paint a lot because I know how to use her waxes. And um, I like her waxes because they are very, very strong. It's not, they're not water-based, right? So a lot of the sealers people use are water-based and good grief my head is getting flushed looking down like that um, a lot of sealers are water-based and which means they're not as tough they're not as strong as something that is oil-based or something like her wax I have no idea what her ingredients are but the wax is um, very very strong and very tough and very durable so if I'm painting something for a client and they want it to be chalk painted I almost always seal with her wax because I know that it's going to be a tough sealer and you want to make sure if someone's paying you that you know you're going to give them a really good product now these drawers um, they go in just a little bit so I have to come in here with my paintbrush and I have to actually paint inside a little bit because if you don't, obviously you close the drawer and you're gonna see, you're gonna see the original whatever it is, wood or paint or whatever. So I have to come in here and actually paint inside. Um, not only paint, but I have to go and, if I'm using wax as a sealer, which I am, I have to go in and also wax this inside area because if you don't do exactly what you're doing on the outside, uh, it's going to be noticeable. So even though it's just a little bit showing, I don't think it's even half an inch. It's like a quarter of an inch that shows um, you have to do it properly. Probably really, 
really boring watching me, but, um, you know, I figured my grandsons, at least Owen, I know Owen likes to sometimes watch grandma paint, so. I'm doing this for the grandbabies. And later today, I'm going to be posting uh, the tall boy of this set. I finished it for them. And I will be posting the photo um, later this afternoon of the tall boy. So you can see what this color looks like um, on a tall piece of furniture. Have, always have water on hand when you're using chalk paint. I forgot to do a little last, a little last sweep. Smooth things out. And this somehow, I don't know what, boy, was I ever making a mess. Another project I'm working on is antique white beds for a client so um, obviously I was making a mess yesterday and splattered paint on this piece thank goodness this piece was not finished Now, I'm not going to go in and do the entire area. Um, I just do the edge. Some people might do that, but I don't. I mean, you're not going to, you're not going to leave this exposed in your house, so. how that just smooths it out when you add water. So I need to get in this little crack in here. Make sure that is taken care of. Adding some water down here. Okay, I noticed right here I missed a spot. So let me try and get that there. And right here I missed. This French French provincial pieces have um, you know so many so many curves.
first coat is always going to look bad. So, um, you know, that's just typical. It's okay. By the time you get to your second coat, it's going to, it's going to be way better. Oh, brighter. When you first start painting, the paint always looks brighter on your first coat. And as it dries, it dries dark. Dries darker than when you're first putting it on. Do I need to move this closer, you guys? Uh, Melissa, pretty color. What brand paint and color is that? Melissa, this is um, Annie Sloan chalk paint. It is a custom color for a client. It is Napoleonic blue and graphite. Um, she wanted a deep, dark blue, blue-gray. So I can't tell you the actual amounts I use because I never measure. I just pour. Um, but it is more, it's more Napoleonic blue than graphite. But those are the two colors. So I was saying earlier, it is, you know, it's really fun to mix your colors. Uh, chalk paint It's so easy to mix colors. So definitely experiment with that and you know, have fun with mixing colors. I'm just going to add a little bit of water here. Um, dries. Water is something you definitely want to have on hand when you um, are using chalk paint. Thank you. And then do one quick sweep if you can do one quick sweep of your area um, when you're chalk painting, that really does help too. Did that so just one quick sweep it will help to uh, smooth things out and the water makes things smoother too Let's see if there's any more questions nope
I'm just adding water here. So your first coat is going to always look bad. Did I say that? Don't panic. Almost always by the time you put on your second coat, um, you know, it looks amazing. Unless you're working with white, then you need lots of coats. And you want to make sure you've got really good brushes. Um, so invest, invest in some good brushes. Okay, hang on. What was that? I just noticed. I just noticed something here after I did that sweep. Okay. This is why you wear painting clothes, because you need to be able to wipe your fingers right away. Here's another spot. So I'll get in all the uh, cutouts here. Sweep, sweep. Okay, let me try and get this a little bit closer. Teresa, your work is amazing. How did you get into chalk painting? Hi, Teresa. Um, hmm. How did I get into this? Boy. Well, because I like to switch things up. And um, I don't like spending a lot of money on furniture. And I like change. So being able to go and buy your furniture at Goodwill or thrift shops, um, of course, is way cheaper than buying at a store. And I don't know. I guess I've just always been a little bit creative. And I figured, hmm, I can go and buy something at Goodwill or Salvation Army or whatever for, you know, $20 or $40, a good solid piece of furniture, and I can just paint it and create something beautiful. So I've been doing this now a long time. How long? Um, I think eight years professionally, and maybe a little bit longer, you know, if I think about what I painted at our house, um, a few extra years and chalk paint because chalk paint is easy to work with it's easy to um, manipulate you know you can water it down you can mix colors you can um, do amazing things with the waxes and that's why I like chalk paint it dries fast it's easy to work with and you can paint it on many, many things, including plastic, including um, brass, and, and everything, really. And I actually, um, I actually was working for some uh, Annie Sloan stockists in Calgary, K 
Canada for a while too, so. That got me involved in the chalk paint world even more. Let's see if I can move all of this down a little bit. Oh, sorry you guys, when I get so close, it's kind of scary. My old face, very scary. Okay. So yeah, I've been doing this a long time. And uh, Teresa took a class from me. How is your painting of your cabinets going? Are you I don't know if you're still on, but if you are still on, I would love to know how your cabinet painting is going. She came and took a class, a uh, cabinet painting class from me because she is painting her own, her cabinets. I can't remember now, was it the kitchen? I don't think it was the kitchen. I think it was her laundry room. Or was it the kitchen? I can't remember. So um, she came and took a class from me. Oh, there you are. Tell me how your cabinet painting is going. Did you ever get that project done? She came and took a class from me on cabinet painting. Um, I love teaching. I love teaching people. It's going slowly, but the base cabinets are finished. It's my craft room. It's her craft room. Yay! I'm so glad. You're going to have to send me a photo. I want to see the finished, the finished product when you're all done. Did you end up, um, I've only done the two big basements. Did you end up, um, what did you use as your sealer? Did you end up putting the wax on as your sealer? Or did you do a water-based sealer? Two base cabinets, okay. That's okay. That's okay if you work slowly. Take your time. There's no need to there's no need to rush on these big projects. Everyone's so busy. You used uh, wax. Okay, good. That's good. It's a good sealer. I know a lot of people don't like wax. A lot of people are against wax. But um, my opinion is wax is an excellent sealer. It is hard to work with. Um, you know, if you don't, if you're new, if you've never waxed before, it is uh, tricky. I have written blogs about working with wax. I sell a tutorial. I have three more cabinets to do. I love using the wax. Okay, good. I'm glad you didn't have any trouble with it. Uh, Teresa, always, she also bought my tutorial on how to wax. She took a class and she bought the tutorial, which you can buy on my website. Um, it's only $10 and it's, what was, I think it was 40 minutes. And I, I show you how, to, I go through the whole process of um, how to use the wax. The wax is, any stone wax is very, very uh, tough. It's a good, it's a good tough uh, sealer, but you have to make sure you let it uh, cure. It has to cure for the, uh, well, she says 21 days, any Sloan, but I, I say 30. I don't know, I think 21 to 30, let's, let's go on the side of more time. I say I got lint all over the side from using a red t-shirt that evidently was full of lint. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, 
oh dear. Well, if you can't get the lint off, you can go back um, to that side and um, lightly scuff it with sandpaper and just re-wax. Take off all that lint with sandpaper and then just re-wax. And the thing about yeah, the t-shirts is um, you want to make sure that you, you after you cut them up, you want to make sure you take them outside and shake them really well and get off all the lint, all the stuff that is on your t-shirts um, before you actually start using them. Because yeah, they will be, they're going to be full of lint. That's just normal. So, you know, I go and buy all my t-shirts at Goodwill. Um, I buy the ones that are 99 cents for the day because that's what I use when I wax is um, I cut up t-shirts and um, it is good if you can find white t-shirts um, it's good to get white t-shirts because then you won't have any of the dye going on to your piece if you use let's say you're gonna you have a blue t-shirt you cut up um, and you're you have a piece that's white or cream well the blue dye from your t-shirt could go on to your piece as you're waxing and pushing and doing all that so um, you know, if you're working on a really light color, you're waxing, use a t-shirt, use a t-shirt for the buffing, use a t-shirt that is white to take off all your wax. So that, you know, you don't have any chance of the dye from the t-shirt going on to your uh, piece of furniture or your cabinet doors. But of course, if you're doing something like this is blue gray, um, you know, I'll just grab a, a blue t-shirt and cut it up and um, do my uh, removing of the wax with a blue t-shirt. That'll be okay then. So this color, I love this color. I think I'm going to um, do this on something else of my own once I'm done all of this furniture for my clients it looks like I didn't come back here and do my last stroke on this piece here so um, what I'm gonna do is just grab my water and um, add some water and then come back And make sure when you're painting, uh, like I said earlier, you want to make sure that you are looking for the brush hairs that might come off your uh, brush. If you're using uh, really high quality brushes, you shouldn't be having loose hairs, but you know, you just never know. I mean, they're natural bristles, so they might come off. So when I'm done here, I'll try to remember to show you guys um, a cabinet door, a kitchen cabinet door that I did for a client. Um, she didn't want any distressing whatsoever, so she wanted it to be more sort of a modern look. Um, so that's when I did um, the undercoat was an oil primer that I put underneath so that when I went to sand, um, you know, the wood grain wouldn't show through. I think I have the door right here on the table. I don't know if you guys saw, but I did a um, video yesterday, yesterday on uh, kitchen painting. Kitchen painting 101. Just sort of the basics to know before you start. And I will, um, I haven't done a tutorial. I am working on a full tutorial um, on chalk painting that you can buy on the website. But I haven't finished that yet. So that's going to be coming 
um, some point. I know sometimes it's just easier to, you know, sit at home and learn at home on your laptop um, instead of coming to a class. So I thought I would make that available to somebody who can't actually get out. I need to move this a little closer. It's a huge uh, weight. I have no idea why this weight is in here. Let's move this back if I can. color is so beautiful. That's the color. Can you guys see? That's the color there um, behind me. Doesn't look pretty. I can see in the camera. It doesn't really look that pretty on camera, but it's beautiful. I'm not doing a good job with my left hand, so <laughs> I need to switch. I think I got everything there. Okay, before I go around to the other side, I'll just show you, let me see if I can grab that door I was talking about. Here it is. This is the door and let me see if I can, oh, hang on a second. I hope you guys can see. This is the uh, sample door I did for my client. It's got lint all over it. So this is the sample door I did for my client. Um, I know the light isn't very good in here. I wonder if I turn this light off, if it would help. Hang on a second. Let me try turning this, see if that makes a difference. So this is the sample door I did for my client. Uh, this is called graphite, and this is one of the colors in this uh, dresser. Uh, this was for her kitchen. I did the sample door, and if you can see, um, there's no distressing on here, and um, I added this gold uh, trim in here for a little bit of bling um, for her kitchen. She wanted a little bit of, just a little bit of bling, um, and she wanted a sophisticated look. So um, this is chalk paint. It doesn't look like it, but it is actually chalk paint. And um, it's got that gold, you see that gold trim in there. It's kind of like inking, um, a gold trim. And this was for her kitchen. And then um, this is the hardware I found for her. Look at how amazing that looks. This beautiful hardware that I found um, I'll post a picture. I'll post a picture later of this, but um, her kitchen is just gorgeous. And um, anyways, the trick, the, my secret I told you about earlier when I started the video was this is oil paint underneath here. So that is my secret. If you don't want any distressing, you put on a coat of oil paint. And um, I don't know, I love that oil paint. I love it. So um, I think I'm gonna incorporate it more oil paint uh, uh, on my furniture. So anyways, when you go and sand the chalk paint, um, because you have to sand, it doesn't go down to the wood, right? The oil paint is kind of like the barrier. So, and somehow, I don't know, it just makes it look smoother. So if you want a more sophisticated look and no distressing, um, oil paint is the trick. So, and then this handle was the other option. Did I bring it down? Oh, here it is. 
This was the other one that we are considering. Um, look at this, you guys. Isn't that cool? Gold brass, more on the side of gold. Um, but these kind of gold colors, look how amazing that looks. More, but this was a little too modern for her. Um, her husband wanted to keep it traditional. So that's why we went with this handle. Anyways, these are from Lowe's Online. Lowe's Online actually has a ton of hardware. They don't have a lot in their store, but if you go online to Lowe's.com, um, they have got amazing, amazing hardware options online that you can order, and it's not very expensive. So it is definitely worth it to go check them out. So that's that, and um, tomorrow I think I will come on and show you guys. I'll go through all my samples and show you guys some color options for your uh, cabinet doors. So maybe I'll do that tomorrow. All right, I will sign off now because I have to go around and do the other side. And this is probably getting boring. So hello, Owen and Daniel. Goodbye, Owen and Daniel. And we will see you soon. Thanks, you guys, for watching. If you've got any questions about chalk painting or anything else, just leave it in the comments and I will answer you. Thank you.